The 2020 Post O'Brien Award videos are brought to you by Horse Racing Alberta. Hey everyone, Rachel Nima here from Standard Red Canada and joining me today is John Pentland, trainer and part owner of three-year-old pacing filly for the O'Brien Award, Laura's Love. John, congratulations. How does it feel? Awesome. I feel great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was a relief. You know, yeah, I, <laughs> I bet. I bet. So, you know, Let's talk about Laura's love, you know, from start to finish. She didn't race as a two-year-old, but she did have a, a rather big three-year-old year. So, you know, what were the changes that you saw to her from her first start in January to her last start in the fall? Well, um, she showed a lot as a two-year-old, but I just quit early with her. She okay. had a little inflammation in her ankles. Um, so that's why she started kind of like at an awkward time in January. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I kind of thought she was a nice filly, but, you know, nobody ever knows you know, yeah. how much you're going to progress. And, um, but, um, I mean, she kind of did everything right. And, and Bob got where he could work with her, you know, cause she wasn't the easiest horse to drive and, uh, COVID came and she got a break, but she was going to get one regardless. Okay. And, uh, yeah, when, I mean, when she started in the sire stakes and that, I mean, she, you know, she'd already sort of made her mark that she was one of the better fillies and that. And, uh, um, you know, she just seemed to, be able to progress well and you know ended up being a nice horse yeah so you purchased her as a yearling so what are some of the your favorite qualities in her are those qualities that you tend to look for when you make all of your yearling purchases or, or was there something particular that that stuck out in her well I mean uh, I kind of I buy a lot of fillies okay. and uh, have this theory that you know uh, Philly should have a front end like a ballerina and a back end like a washwoman, and uh, she sort of fit that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she was, you know, kind of a big butted girl, and yeah. uh, um, you know, she was bred a lot like powerful Chris. You know, she okay. was uh, better than Cheddar out of a Western Hanover line mare. So uh, those kind of things worked. Yeah, for sure. So at what point in her in her early beginnings did you kind of say to yourself, you know? I might kind of have something, something special here. No, honestly, it was like, like a two year old. Um, oh, okay. Not mark. Really. Like okay. I, I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll roll my babies a little bit. I don't go a whole mile with them and I roll them a little bit. And I, I, I rolled her one day around a turn and 33, I think I went a quarter and 33 seconds with her and I went, you know, and, and I went, wow, that really didn't seem to, you know, bother doing, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. it was just really easy. So yeah. I thought at that point, uh, you know, she's, she's really fast and she's eager, good gated. Um, she had all the parts. So yeah, it was a hard decision when she got off a little bit to quit with her. Yeah. Okay. So throughout her season, because she did kind of race basically the whole three-year-old year, really, you know, if you had to narrow it down to one particular victory that really sticks with you, you know, which one would it be? Well, it would be Grand River where she won a gold on a really dirty day, um, on industry day. And, uh, she had to come from off the pace and it was a lot of work that day. And she was able to, uh, she was able to get the job done. Awesome. So, you know, what, as I had said, as she kind of raced throughout the whole season, sort of speak, you know, what kind of preparation goes into trying to keep a horse fit and healthy and sound throughout the whole season? Like, do you, is there certain things that you believe in or, or do you think that part of it really is just, you know, having luck on your side? Well, I mean, in a perfect case scenario, I don't know if I'd started a horse that's a gold horse in January, but <laughs> a gold horse, so um, I guess, you know, I mean, I, I never train hard. I train a lot, but I don't train fast. And, right. uh, so I, I mean, I think, I think, uh, Blair Burgess said it to me one time, him and I were talking about tell all and he, uh, he kind of, how did he put it? He said, what are you training them to do? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, she yeah. already was fast and she was in good shape. So yeah. I mean, modest training and just trying to keep her, keep her happy and sound. For sure. Um, so how are you hoping she makes that transition from, from three to four and, and has to race against older mares now? It's, sometimes it is a, a tougher transition for, for some to make, but how are you hoping that she does handle the transition? Well, I hope she handles it like so much more did. <laughs> for sure, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I called on Beast and asked for some tips. Yeah, uh, <laughs> for sure. Um, um, go ahead, go ahead. No, anyways, I don't know. She's she 
she was put away sound and you know she's grown a little bit so hopefully she makes transition good and now on a closing note kind of thing of all the good horses that have come and gone through your stable how do you kind of rank laura amongst all of those horses um not the best filly i think talent wise that i've had she's very good like you know i'm not knocking on her she's a very good filly she's really gutsy i mean she yeah. just she just lays it on the line every start yeah. um and she's so determined to get to the wire um she might not be as talented as maybe luck michelle or chancy lady or even uh even uh um powerful chris but but uh, she sure is a determined filly. <laughs> For sure. So now, kind of going off topic of horse racing, we have a little um, rapid fire game to play. <laughs> so our first question is, when you're not working, how do you like to spend your time? Um, I like seeing my kids. Uh, I'm actually into yoga. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, cool. watching hockey and netflix it's, it's yeah. kind of hard to occupy yourself right uh, right now it, it definitely is but on the topic of netflix is there a show that you are currently um really investing a lot of time into well no but i'm like excited about ozark coming back okay <laughs> yeah and Jameless is coming back next week. So yep. those are the two that I really like. Perfect. Um, so what about if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what meal would that be? Hmm. I think it would have to be maybe chicken stir fries so I don't die really quick. <laughs> okay. How about um, three things that you would take with you to a deserted island? Um... I guess a yoga mat, a bottle of wine, and a girl. <laughs> I love it. Um, how about one thing that's on your bucket list? Um, I'd like to win a big race. Yeah. Do you have one yeah. in particular? Well, I, I've been second and third, and she's a great lady, so that that's one's better. kind of cute with me. Yeah. So. Um, what is the worst thing about winter? Getting home at 2.30, taking a shower, and not putting jeans on for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. Or the fact that it gets dark <laughs> within the next couple hours, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, what about a piece of advice that you would give to your 18-year-old self? Um... I guess I would say make yourself valuable to whoever you work for. Perfect. So our last one, kind of a fan favorite one is, who is your celebrity crush? I like Kristen Bell from The Good Place. She's pretty cute. <laughs> Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me for a little bit this morning. And uh, I wish you all the best in uh, 2021 with your stable and, and Laura's love. Thanks. It was fun, Rachel.